Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to This Will Be Named Later, a podcast about content creators, the creative culture, if you will. Now, this is a part where I act all professional and tell you what the podcast is about, but I'm not really good at being professional, so let's just keep it a buck. And like I said, we talk about creators from all walks of life, from all mediums, you know, modders, um, podcasters, video content creators, vloggers, bloggers, everybody in between. But more specifically at this juncture, we're talking about wrestling creators because a lot of us are underserved in the wrestling community, but there's a lot of us creating content. And a lot of content that needs to be consumed, that needs to be known about, and needs to be discussed, distributed, and brought forth into a bigger light. So I hope that with this podcast, we can do that and shine a light on some of these people that are making dope-ass stuff for the wrestling community. And now, part two of our two-part series on Spot Callers Gaming, with the head developer, created the grand pooba of Spot Callers Wrestling, Shannon Williams. We talk about a bunch of stuff regarding the animations, my opinions on the animations, more talk about the game development, his history, and some questions from the OCW Fed mailbag slash community. So sit back, relax, grab a cold one, enjoy yourself, because it's part two of our podcast with Shannon Williams. Enjoy. Let's go, baby. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. But that's the style. It's just two quick poses, but it has a sound. Like the, the sound sounds good. And okay, it, look, I don't like when you explain it. I was like, because I, I know the stop motion stuff, but I, I don't hate it. I'll be honest with you. And that's not even me. Like, oh, let me be nice. No, nah, I dig it. Because see, the thing is, just like you said, the camera, and then well, I, this is a gift, so there's no sound. But like, yeah. just just alone with that. It's like it kind of gives the 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 effect, and then I like the little lens flare, the light flare. I'm not good with with describing nice. things like that. No, you said the right way the first time. Yeah, so I could I could dig it because see, it's not it's not a traditional in the sense that it's basically like you know, live action. Here comes the pain, which is hyper fa- fast or no mercy. It's basically like a combination of stuff, which leads me to ironically the next question that I have, which is yep. from uh, Nick, aka Salami Kane, <laughs> and he asks <laughs> he asks. Are you looking for a more realistic game, an arcade style, or a blend of both? I think you answered that, but if you just wanted to elaborate a little bit more, we can go for that just so I can feel that he's, uh, you know, answered this question. Yeah, I got you. Hold on one second. Um, what's, what's your Twitter name? One more time. Oh, sure. It's uh, at, OC, at OCW Fed. We follow OCW each other. Yeah, Fed. OCW cool. Fed. I wanted to, like, your name, or oh, here it is. It wouldn't automatically pop up for me when I kept typing it in. I'm like, yeah, so I'll just send I'm, you another I'm, one. I'm bad. I'm really bad at everything. No, you uh, So uh, I just sent you, I just sent it to you um, so that you can see okay. the example. But um, to answer that question, yeah. Um, yeah I, I, don't, I, I don't, I don't hate that. Especially, yeah. especially the fact, the fact that, it, that this, this style allows you to, to constantly create. So yeah. like so like let's say like a year or two from now and people are like oh but what if you can be like oh maybe maybe we'll look at something like this because now you 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 have content and that's that's the key the key is to have content and to ha- you know to have something that people can can use play modify and go with I dig yeah. it and I, I appreciate it man and that's really what it was and um I I really spent the um. I spent a lot of money getting animations done from this dope, dope dude who um, did animations for Endorphin. But the thing was, man, when I would throw it in the game, it just it really broke up the gameplay in a way I didn't like. Um, this was a, before I did the turn-based style. So I, I really just wanted to do something that I could 100% control. I didn't need to commission anybody. Um, two, it could be done smoothly, and I could make it look nicely because I'm going off animation pictures. And, yeah. Uh, I want. I just wanted my game to feel good. You know, I want when people play, I want it to feel good. So even if it doesn't look the flashiest, I still want it to feel nice, like when you play it. So, um, yeah. But to answer the question, sorry about that. Oh, uh, what was it? it? Salami? Yeah, Salami. Salami, Salami? Salami, Salami Kane. It's a lot of hell. I'm bad. I like these are good dudes. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, okay, so you said realistic, arcadey. Um, and what was the other one? He's, he's basically hybrid? saying, are are you are you looking for more of a realistic game, an arcade style, or a blend of both? So we know that it's that it that it's turn based, and we know that there's cards involved. Yeah. Uh, and we know the art. We know the art style. But I guess from the ho- from the horse's mouth, like what what's what's the idea? You, well, you mentioned it, but I just just go ahead read, read. So his question is answered. So it, would it be more considered to say that it would be realistic because you're actually trying to put on the best match possible? 
Yeah, I would definitely say um, I'm leaning way more towards realistic um, than I am arcade. I know a lot of wrestling games right now are capturing that arcade. Like um, the Shakara guys yeah. are killing it. Um, um, retro, retro Mania. Retro Mania yep. out. Yeah, and then uh, I even, I even think Pro Wrestling X is an arcade game. Like I don't really think that's a simulation based game. Uh, um, like and, and and what they're going for, shall I say? And yeah. um, with me, I really I don't care about people trying to play this game to speed through it or um, you know trying to really whatever people. Well, it's arcade. it's turn based. You really can't speed through a turn based card game. I mean, because you have a certain amount of time to well, in, in traditional card game, you have a certain amount of time to do anything. So, and I don't think anyone's gonna be like speeding through anything. Yeah, and then even on top of that though, um, I put a mode in here and I'm I'm cleaning it up, but this mode will actually let you book an entire match from start to finish, from bell to bell. Hmm. Um, and booking that match is you get since the car since the moves are cards, um, you can literally go through, you can search whatever move you want to do, and you can say, All right, do this move. I want to attack a one and do this move to attack a two. I want this to be the outcome, and then go move by move and then play that match through. And I think that's something that <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with. I know that much I'm gonna have a lot yeah. of fun with it when it's finished, but it's something that I think um makes it it, it, it feels like my game is in its own realm, kinda. You know, I'm gonna be thing. honest. I'm gonna be honest, like, yeah. Like I don't I don't think there's ever been a game like proposed like this. Like maybe Supercard, but not really. Because right. the the key is is that you have you know, you're trying to have a good match as opposed to maybe trying to win, which which is uh, leads me to one of my questions, which I, I have is basically like when when you have your when you when you go for your first iteration that you're gonna put out and wherever you're gonna wherever you're gonna put I don't know is it gonna be on Steam or you're gonna yeah, go for starting it? on Steam starting okay on Steam. Oh, th- good because then that means that I, I, if you have early access I got you we'll see what's up yeah um so what what I want to know is so are you gonna offer like player versus player from Rip or is it just gonna be only only against the computer um so that's something I've been really trying to research the best way to do it okay. Um, I know for sure I want to make it where you can have two remotes hooked up at the same time and go against each other. I know I know I want that to be possible. Um, as far as player versus player online, yeah. it's definitely possible. Um, I just want to make sure if I do it, I do it correctly. You know, I don't want to just I got do you. stuff in there. I don't. My my biggest fear is that I um I inflate my workload to the point where I can't manage the quality. No, no, and, no. That makes sense. Know, and, and if if I if I put it out there, I want it to work nicely. I want people to have fun because, you know, if the thing is, if I put something out that sucks, like a, a part of it that sucks, and then people have that experience, then they'll probably get a, a sour taste and be like, okay, well, this game sucks because of this one mode. You well, know? well, when it comes to that, like like the rule of uh, like Charlemagne says, uh, well, that he got it from somebody, Charlemagne the guy. He basically says that like you know, uh, like I don't know if it's like three people gonna love it, three people gonna hate it, four people not gonna care. So hey, you can't be hung up on. On people that like, like everybody has to like it because they're not. There's, there's, there's like once, once people hear turn based, they're, they're gonna go ugh. Because people, right. you know, people are just pe- people are picky. People are fickle. <laughs> to quote right. Daniel Bryan, fickle, yeah. super fickle. So like for me, I would, I would really love like a, a fight. Like because the car games, you always the, the appeal of them is is outsmarting your opponent. So like that's the appeal. Like I, I'm not good at them, but that that's what I like about that. So to be able to do that in the context of a of a like a of a turn based wrestling game would be kind of dope for me. Like I'm like oh okay, like I'm I'm out playing them and I'm working mm-hmm. the crowd and I beat his behind, so I feel good about yeah. myself right now. But okay, I, get, so- I get what you're saying that like you know it's a process. So like I'm not rushing you. I'm just I just had to ask. Yeah, but that's definitely something I do want to add. It is it, definitely something that popped in my mind when I first started the game. It's like, okay, um, if I make this game, because what I what I noticed was, um, think about mobile games like yes, uh, Mortal Kombat. I, I took a look at how they did the games online on like a mobile device where uh-huh. they don't actually have you fighting. They they take the player's account and then make it seem like based on how they play possibly they make it seem like you're playing against somebody for real so i've thought about a couple different ways but i I really want to get that real time um i really do want to get that real time head to head and i think it's it's definitely possible i just want to figure out the best way to do it you know no by all means take your time you know what actually would be kind of cool like while you're getting your your footing because of course no you know you gotta you gotta focus on quality is that that could wind up being like you know an update, like one of the big updates down the road. 
And you yeah. could, you could, you, you could like, you know, uh, what the hell is the word? Um, damn, I can't think. I'm, t- I'm the podcast guy. I can't be thinking. You can promote that, like, oh, you know, coming soon, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And mm-hmm. then you have the update, and now people go fight each other. It's like, oh, okay. Like yeah. stuff like that gives people stuff to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So that that might be that might just be a move on that one, but I'm definitely looking at adding that in eventually. All right, that that uh, that makes me happy. So the Laughing Man, aka Gooch, aka Ooh, <laughs> asks, what could this game offer the EFED community? Um, got gotcha you there, huh? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely also something I thought about. But I I want to say a lot, and I'm trying to figure out the most important point. So I, I'll just start talking. But go ahead. Um, a different opportunity to really showcase your all around skills. So I'm not really, I'm not 100% sure how deep the EFEDs go. Like I really want to figure out how deep they go. That um, that is a conversation for another another time, trust me. Like it yeah. it is it is we we could probably talk about that off, off camera. So I guess we'll put a pin in this question because it's yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's a wormhole, that's a a black yeah. hole that you you ain't prepared for. So we'll go, we'll get back to that one. Uh so Dirty Mac asks uh Will it include? He, wow, he just got a bunch of questions. So I'll try to go <laughs> one by one. He goes, "Will it include a creation suite?" I'm assuming yes, because you yes, mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> he said, "If so, how deep? What options? Championships, arenas, rings, etc." Yeah, so uh, I'll just list off what I currently have: either okay. done or in motion. Um, create an arena, which is 95 percent done. Nice. Um, now, what I want to add in, I actually have footage of that on my YouTube from okay, old I'll stream, check it out. What I want to add into my creating arena is um, the ability to copy attributes from one object to another. So my create arena is very similar to the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series. Okay. Skate 3, where you can literally place objects anywhere you want to. And then, you know, you place the markers as an entrance markers where you want them to come out at. And All right. You know, make it to the ring. So um, that's something I pride myself on is that. And then also it allows imp- uh, real-time texture importing. So um, I have it imported from um, websites right now. So you can import it from any Google image or any Reddit image or an image that's online. You can just put that URL in or import it directly from your computer. That, that's like, because I'm using OBS, but that, that's like like uh, OBS when you have like um, the, the skins or whatever. Not the skins, but uh, the overlays. Like when you have the animated overlays, they, they call for URL. So it's basically the same technology. Yeah, yeah. That's yep. that's that's kind of dope. Now, now here's a dumb question for me, because with with that technology, like let's say I don't know, uh, I import a texture and it's from like I don't know website whatever, and mm-hmm. that website um you know decides goes to either down. be deleted or goes down, so that texture won't load, right? Right. Okay. So um, to, in order to like I, I can't fully account for that other than every time you download a text, you're saving it to your computer. Like okay. that's an option I thought about. But um, I do also offer the option for you to load from your computer instead. So okay. as long as that file is in your computer, it'll load with no problem. Um, I like yeah. that a lot. So oh, 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 go, ahead. go ahead. Real quick to finish that question. So we got the create an arena, which is basically done. Create a wrestler is at 70%. Um, I'm actually working on this as we speak because I want to figure out the best way to throw in some preset tattoos. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw some of the screenshots. I, do, I was like, oh, that's, that's really like, damn, all right. I like, like that. And that also allows you to do real time texture important. So um, I allow you to do it um, as an internal texture. So that's things that are under the um, elbow pads, wrist tape, um, clothes, tights, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, as well as an external body texture, which that's stuff that's over the um, pads and tights and stuff. Um, and then individual clothing texture. So one for the t shirt, pants, knee pads, knee pads, and boots. So. Um, yeah, I hope I, I just want to see the dope stuff people was creating, and with it being on Steam and being, you know, um, workshop. Pulling these textures, yeah, it's just gonna be. Crazy, Are you gonna have you gonna you gonna have workshop uh, functionality? Yes. All right, good. Yes. I like I'm that. I'm figuring that out. I'm I'm gonna figure that out and make it happen. Um, because I'm I'm big on the creation community. Those are my babies. Um, yeah, that that's like that that's like the bread and butter. There's so many like seeing all the all the, like a lot of the creators from uh, uh from 2K19 go to 2K20 and then say yeah I think I'm gonna take a, a year off or I can't do this. Mm-hmm. Like I don't download because I my my spot is mostly just people use their created characters and they compete against each other uh, in my mm-hmm. little world in my little world. So but 
on occasion, Fire Pro, I download like everybody. My, my, I have about, I don't know, a thousand guys on Fire Pro. My friend Jerry got like 5,000 guys on Fire Pro. That's a whole mm-hmm. different animal. But the thing is to see creators say, yeah, we're not going to, I'm not going to do it right now because the game's broken. That is like it heartbreaking. Mm. That is, that is beyond whack, man. That's like when you have a, a, a company, a developer that just, just wants the money. And then, you know, they don't care. Talking to you right now, it's only been about, like, like 50 minutes. You can tell in your voice. And this is not me, you know, kissing, besando de cool. It's not yeah. me kissing that. This is you are passionate about your project. Yeah. You want you want your project to work. You you, you know, you, you already got the heart. You talk about Pro Wrestling X. I don't hate Pro Wrestling X, but, at, at, you know, since I run an online league at one point, with Pro Wrestling X, we were trying to get, you know, we we're like, oh, we'll just wait it out and then you Pro Wrestling X. And that was <laughs> like 15 years ago, B. Yeah. And just now, like, that, that, like, that sucked. So yeah. your approach, at least people have the option to see to see it as it's developing. And anyway, yeah. back enough of my nonsense. Back to the no, questions. You, you good. So actually, let me speak on something you just mentioned. And this ahead. is how my ideas work. Like, I just they just come out of nowhere. You spoke about the eFed thing. And let me touch on something that you can do. With that feature I told you about earlier that allows you to book a match from start to finish, imagine what people are able to do when they have like 10 people or 15 people and they want to put on a show, you know, using other people's creative wrestlers. And then they say, okay, hey, you two book this match. And then they let those two book the match out and then send it back to the promoter. The promoter then just copies and pastes that match and play, let that, lets that match play with those two wrestlers. Like, that's something that can be done. Like, it sounds like a lot going on, but when you really think about it, it's literally you just having a match, but you telling the rest, you telling the booker how you want to do it. And so yeah. let, let me, so let me ask that. So with, with that, with that feature, will it, all right, how, how do I explain this in, in a way that makes sense? I'm very bad at explaining sometimes. So with that feature that you mentioned, would it be like they select everything from start to finish and then there's like a like not like a play button but they have the access to then just run it without having to go back to the turn based style is that what you're saying yes so that see that, that that's that's con- that's dope that's dope yeah. so that that would be how you seen that um the enziguri and the yeah. panama sunrise yeah let's say if i was like okay this is gonna be the order i'm hitting the panama sunrise you hit enziguri it would be like panama sunrise maybe a second or two of a pause if you wanted to add that to you know for dramatic effect and then uh enziguri Right there, just play it back to back to back to back to back to back. Okay. So you just, you just so, so it's so it's basically like 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 two modes. So you have the you have the you know the the regular mode where you're doing it, you know, turns and you're using your cards, and you have like the whatever whatever you want to call it. Let's just for this argument say just call it efed mode, whatever. You have the efed mm-hmm. mode where you basically you plot the entire thing out, yeah. and then you hit play, and then you just play it out. I yeah. di- I dig that. Like that, there's a lot of potential there for, uh, you know. Because the EFED thing is gigantic. So mm-hmm. there's so many different... We, that's Like I said, that's, that's a conversation for another day. But yeah, that yeah. that alone, that feature is... is that's that's I like that. Because there's never been a game where you can kind of plan, like, plan everything out. Yeah, like the sim community, they kind of do it, but they do it in a way with, with video stuff. And, and they, they, they spend hours and they cut stuff. What we do is we just go and we beat the crap out of each other. My guys just, just smack each other around. Sometimes it looks like, like you know... Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels, sometimes it looks like terrible. It's just a crap mm-hmm. depending on how people look at the game. It, it is what it is. But I like yeah. that. So that 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 that's that's dope. Um, yeah, that was, I, I, that's, that's really refreshing. Add it to this. So that, that's just how my ideas they pop out sometimes. But um with the creative mode, so I do plan on having a creative belt, um, which that'll probably be something super duper simple. Um I have create merch in progress where you can um, import textures for um, t-shirts and then hopefully my, my goal is to make it where you see when you have the fans coming up to you you see the fans wearing that shirt but also um, make it where you can see fans in the audience wearing your merch the, the bigger you get uh, I just I, I don't want to guarantee that as a feature just nah, yet you just dream, dream and how, dream man yeah I want I know how I can do it but I just want to make sure the uh, it won't kill performance so that, that that's just what I want to make sure um, doesn't happen. But yeah, so that's a that's something that's in the works. And then create um, create a promotion, which that is basically GMO. <laughs> ah, I, I, I like that. We 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 haven't had a good GMO in 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 forever. Uh, okay, he had. Let me see some other because he, he basically has it going to be like Fire Pro. It, it's not. It's a, it's turn based. It's not like Fire Pro. Uh, is it gonna, <laughs> some of these questions are like I apologize. 
Will it include real wrestlers uh, or similar real ones, kind of like Saturday, like Saturday, like Saturday Night Slam Masters? You have any plans for having any uh, official wrestlers, or is it just just created stuff? Um. So, right currently, no, I don't have any real wrestlers. I have talked to some real wrestlers. Um, some of the wrestlers are from Impact, and um, you know, I might pitch this to a big company that is black and gold one of these days <laughs> since I'm right, you know. I'm in that vicinity. And, go, um, go for one, it, man. Once I get the game big enough, I might go ahead and just pitch that over to him. But the thing is, I don't. I, I wanted to put less imp- less um, importance on the people that are in the game and more important on more importance on the gameplay because this is the thing. If I have a mode that lets you make anybody you want to make, there you I go. Doubt, I doubt people gonna care because I know me personally. I never even. I never care who was on the roster because we made them anyways. Like we had Branga Man, Dre Forty One, Status. Myself, like we, we had people in the community making these people. Um, so if we didn't have the Dudley Boys, it didn't matter. We make the Dudley Boys, Spike Dudley, and Stacey Keebler just for the love, you know. So <laughs> um, I, I I put a lot of a, a lot less importance on that because this is the thing. This is the thing that comes with it as well. These wrestlers have to get paid when you put them in the game. Like yeah. they, they're not just going to give the likeness of fruit. Nope. So unless you're getting people who are completely going to like break records, like for me, I have. Three people I really want to get that I feel like I would be willing to pay a nice penny for, and that's on um, Will Ospreay, and that's probably not gonna happen since he's with New Japan. Um, Marty Skrull, which is probably also not gonna happen because of his cir- circumstances, and um, I would just say two. I would just say them two, really. Um, but the thing is, I don't want to have a lopsided ro- wrestler. So if I uh, a, lo- a lopsided roster, so if I got those two, I need to fill you got it. Out you got to kind of people. fill it out with it with like yeah. other people. It's kind of it gets it gets it gets expensive. Yeah, and Dre Forty One, he has offered kindly to um, work with his community to start getting some of their original characters as wrestlers in the game. Oh, I can get I can get I, you some characters as well if you need them. Holla. Yeah, that'd be cool. So that that's the type of stuff that. I don't. I don't even mind that as long as there's no expectation for a big fee to be paid nah. out. You know, um, that that's something that I'm like, bring the bring as much as y'all want, and I'll put it in. Um, and you know, go from there. Shoot, I got I got quite a few people that that be like, oh, can can I? Like, you ain't getting paid. Like, I don't care. Like, ah, we'll bring it in. Uh, we got we got quite a few. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about yeah. that after. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, the other questions include um, da 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 da. He said platforms, uh, cross platforms specific to one game console. If so, which one? Jeez. <laughs> So basically asking, uh, is it just going to be, is it going to be like, uh, could you already said steam in the workshop? So do you have any plans for the consoles? Yeah. So this is the thing. I want to get everything together on steam first, Mm -hmm. uh, make sure, you know, I got the modes in and then do a push to console. Um, once I got that, cause with me being a one man team, I want to make sure I don't have to port to seven different devices every time I find a bug. Um, because bugs do happen in video games. Of that, course. I mean, even with million dollar <laughs> companies with hundreds of people, they um, have bugs that happen. So um, you can imagine if I'm one person making a game, yeah. as you said, it's ambitious. I'm sure there will be bugs. So I want to kill all those bugs on Steam. That way, when I port to Xbox and PlayStation, I, I have positive reviews um, going into it. And um, you never know what could span from this. You know, I'm really excited about it. I, I really want to see where this goes. I like it, man. It's just a, it's just a product for growth, and yeah. When you said a uh, hundred million dollars and and you know hundred man teams and all that good stuff, prime example: WWE Two K Twenty. Yeah. Need I say more, Internet? Nope. Need I say <laughs> more? Yeah. Scott Aho. Anyway, uh, good good sister Empress says follow follow up question because you said solo dev. Do you enjoy being a solo dev? And yes. how and, and how do you feel about today's generation of video games? Oh, I, I, I want everybody who's asking me a question. I would love y'all follow me so I can follow I'll y'all. Tell, I'll, once this is posted, I'm going to tell them to follow because they, they give me the questions. So I'm going to be like, I, I post all your good stuff and I'll tell them to follow. Because look, I'm, let, let, I'm, I'm going to be 100 with you. Like, I got a community, but I ain't got a stroke like that. So I'm going a, I'm to a get it out there. I, I want them to click the buttons. Like, a lot of the, like when I had content creators, we, we did, did kind of good numbers. So we're going to push for mm-hmm. it. But I'm, I'm going to make sure whoever asked the question going to follow your progress. Yeah, because I'm gonna follow them back. I love I love people who are engaged and ask questions like this because this is stuff I like to talk about. But yeah, yes, I love being a solo dev. Why? Because I have complete control. Like I don't have to go through um, multiple channels to get my ideas heard. You know, I, I can if I have an idea like I just had 
um, a couple of days ago for the match auto auto player, you know, which you choose in a match. Yeah. That's something I was like, I, was, I just got out the shower. I'm like, oh, this would be a dope idea. And then three hours later, I implemented 75% of it because that's Damn. just how, you know, that's that's really just <laughs> how it is as a solo deal. Uh, and she said the current state of games. Yeah. Well, dude, well, well, when she says, how do you feel about the current generation of video games? It's more, it's more to like, uh, answer however you want because we there, there's a conversation to be had about like AAA titles being broken on release. Uh, yeah, okay. okay. And then, then then there's also like the current state of wrestling games because as you know, there's you know you have 2K20 or in 2K19. That's it. And then you have guys like you. And then there's another guy. I don't know who he is, but he's doing like a death match. Um, the game. Gecko. Yeah, Gecko. Gecko. Okay, yeah. I followed him the other day. I saw. It. I was like, I, I was like, how did I hear about this? I saw him making a gigantic scaffolding. Give. I was uh-huh. like, what? Death match video games? Excuse me. Like, but all you really see is Fire Pro, and then you have the, the small independence in between Chica- uh, Chikara and Retromania and stuff like that. So, like, I guess answer however you feel comfortable. Yeah, I would say um, I would say the indie scene is booming. Um, first off, excuse me. Uh, Go ahead. I got burps. I jump Don't on. worry about. It. I'm drinking. I'm drinking Dr Pepper, <laughs> and I haven't had a. a, a it's, it's uh, I guess watered down from KFC. So I don't know. I guess nothing. Uh, I hate KFC pop. Yeah, uh, just, uh, he yeah, pop. Oh, That's oh, how God. you know you from Detroit. You say pop. <laughs> Yeah, we, we say, say soda in New York, sucker. <laughs> we say soda. I'm sorry. It's funny, you know, you good. So, uh, what we, um, my current, what my current opinion is, the gaming industry is booming for indies right now. It, it definitely is um, a great time to be alive and an independent developer. And the reason why I'm gonna say this is because a lot of fans, as you said, are getting fed up with these AAA studios uh-huh. effing them over. You know, uh, you can tell when passion is not put in. And I'm not saying that the developers themselves are not passionate. Like, I I truly believe in my heart that a lot of the programmers and artists and these different things that work on these wrestling games probably are fans or probably do care about the product. Um, And it's not always their fault. But you have multiple chains. And if one thing doesn't go right, it could break the whole thing. So that could be, you know, people that have to approve or sign off on things. Because I know as an artist... I'm passionate about my work. I want to put out the best product that, that I can. Um, so I don't I don't necessarily want to blame the developers of 2K as in like the people who are actually making the game. Um, I, I put more blame on the producer, um, the, the people who let this game go live, like as, as a producer or um, I mean a publisher, not producer. As a publisher, you have to take the time to check that game, check it for all the flaws before you put billions and millions of dollars behind it and promo it. And get all of these YouTubers who have fans depending on them and trusting their words, um, having them pro- promote your game. Because what's happening is you're ruining the trust between that YouTuber and their community. Um, you're ruining the trust between your fans and you know whoever you are developing the game. And you also make it where people just start fall losing passion. And when when people start losing passion in your product. They look for alternatives. Um, key yeah, instance, you know. me, when I was playing, I was playing um, WWE SmackDown versus Raw 2009. That's when I started making creations. Mm-hmm. And I did that all the way up to SmackDown, uh, I mean, to WWE 14. And that was the last game I played. Now, that was the last game for a couple of reasons. First off, I started um, learning game design. But the reason I started learning game design was because um, WWE 15 came out. Yeah. And they, <laughs> That game, um, that game crushed me. A lot, how, how a lot of people are feeling with WWE 2K20, <laughs> me being the creator at that time, somebody who spent hours, days, my life in these games building stuff for them to see how lackluster that game was, man. That broke my heart, and that was at that moment. I'm like, I'm good on 2K. So, um, I, I stopped. That that personally made me feel like, okay, well. If I'm stopping over this, you know, and I know how passionate I am about stuff, I can't imagine what else people are stopping over. So um, I really feel like as an indie dev, this is our time to really step up and shine. Like AEW, I feel like the wrestling gaming community is kind of moving parallel to the wrestling industry in, 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 in general. Mm-hmm. You, know, you really think about it. You had WWE as the um, WWE and TNA for a while, right? After WCW closed. Yep. Um, and they had games respectively, and then TNA kind of whittled away, and they only had the one real game. They had a smaller game, but they're still here as Impact Wrestling. But 
then you had companies like Ring of Honor. And I, I look at when you when you think Ring of Honor, I think like an M. Dicky. Like you like that's somebody who he spent time developing his craft on his own. He built his own niche. And that's really what Ring of Honor was to me. And then you have um gaming companies coming out where you had like a five star wrestling. And five star wrestling, that game to me, um, was more like a I don't even know a good promotion to equate it to, but, you know, another promotion that was trying to come up and um, things might might not have gone as well. And then you have like a pro wrestling and X and PWX is something that I look more like as a CZW where where they they've been grinding, 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 grinding. And they, they start making a couple of different strides. But at the end of the day, it's still the same thing. And now you have a complete new breed of games being developed by people um, like myself. Um, gagged all with the with the ultra violent game. Um, you got Retro Mania coming out. You got the Shakara Pro Wrestling game coming out. You might have more before you know it. And we all are kind of coming out at the same time. The AEW is starting to take over. NXT is going wild. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, NWA Power. And this was something that I was talking to Dre Forty One about. We actually did um, an interview, and I told him I'm like. When you really look at the games that are get the wrestling games that are getting people signed on, like like these companies, they match. Like they they match. Like um, when when I saw the in- Retromania got NWA, I'm like that made sense. Like yes, that's yes, the type did. of game that made sense. I saw Shakara um Shakara get on Action Arcade. I'm like that makes sense. You look at Action Arcade, you look at Shakara. That's a perfect match. Um, I look at. Um, Gagdaw's game with the ultra violence. I'm like, if CZW wanted the game for real, that's the game right there. Um, or you know, any other intense promotion. And with my game, I feel like I'm one of those kind of kind of outliers where I don't necessarily fit one job. Like, oh, one more thing. Um, you had um 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 ah Fire Pro, Fire <laughs> Pro, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yep. Like it made sense. And for for my game, I really feel like I'm kind of different because. Yeah, I I don't have a brand attached, I but I feel like in the um I feel like um man I'm losing my words I feel like NXT is a brand that if you put NXT wrestlers on my game and you watched it or AEW either one I feel like my game would be a perfect fit you know like the just focusing on the psychology of a match the involvement of the crowd the struggles of being a professional wrestler going around the world building a name for yourself and then finally making it breaking it big making your own promotion whatever it is i just honestly feel like that is something that really resonates with my game and um i, I kind of went on a tangent but my re- the reason why i was saying that is um the current game industry is matching the current um wrestling industry as a whole and i, I feel like these big corporations are starting to kind of dwindle a little bit and now you have the underdogs coming up and trying new things and not being afraid to get in these big promoters faces and say hey you know we want our shot we want our opportunity and we're taking them you know we're taking them as we as we can it's not not as an arrogant statement no no but it's it's an exciting time because like the rumor mill and i'm not you know maybe i know maybe i don't know but the rumor mill is that uh, aw is uh Kenny, Kenny and Co, and Co are teaming up with Sin Sophia, which are which was formerly um, Aki, a, or we call it in the hood, AKI. <laughs> AKI. Yeah, right, that's what I call. <laughs> they take we just take when they go Aki, like who the Aki? AKI. You mean AKI? Yeah, they're teaming up with Sin Sophia with AKI. Um, so that's interesting. And then the word on the street is is that Ukes um is actually something very similar to Here Comes the Pain. Like I have nothing to confirm this. But I just have a gut feeling if, if it's not Here Comes the Pain remaster, it's something very, very similar to Here Comes the Pain. And if that if that has online, I'm in like Flynn. So I'm you know, I'm excited mm-hmm. about that. But I just I just like that the fact that there's this choice because when there's a monopoly, the you know, everything around it stagnates stagnates or whatever the word is. So mm-hmm. we we need as as players we need choice as creators we need choice. You talked about two uh, K fifteen destroyed you. That is the one game that my community my community's been active for about actually uh, this past October fifth has been fifteen years that we've been using whatever stupid game has. Some of the games are good, some of the games are terrible. From SVR uh, from S you know from WrestleMania twenty one SVR two thousand five. Uh, 2K15, 2K7, 2K8, uh, 2006, uh, 2K14, 2K19, 2K, whatever. We're not using 20 because it's trash. We're using 19 again for two years in a row. But the point is, 15, the one that killed you, that's the one where we got to January and everyone's like, yeah, let's just take a break. 
out of 15 yeah. years, that's the one that we were just like, yeah, now nah, we're good. So yeah. I, I could imagine as a creator, because I was looking at some of the, cre- when you were talking about 2K15 as a creator, we I have some of the 2K15, like, uh, our, our cause, and I was looking at them, I'm like, wow, they look like really trashy, <laughs> really trashy Barbie dolls, or, mm-hmm. or Ken dolls, rather. It's like, it just, it's t- it's like really just bare bones garbage. Yeah, and that's what they that's because that's what they gave was those were the tools that they gave creators and they it's like they didn't care. And that's that's what bothered me was when I feel like people don't care. It really it really just is disheartening because it's like I sound like I'm about to cry. But <laughs> <laughs> no, that just shows the passion, bro. That shows the pa- passion. It's it's just like when when you can see people don't care, it it really it really just makes it feel like what you're doing is worthless. Yeah, you know? exactly. And that, that's, that's yeah. never the feeling you want to have. Yeah, especially when you're spending so much time doing stuff and you're not even getting paid. Like, we weren't getting paid. This was th- These are hobbies for these guys. For, I mean, they might get paid now, but back then, we, there were no paychecks coming. These were hobbies. Like, this was a passion. So when, when you already feel like, okay, well, I'm spending all my time in a video game and you got people on your head like, all you want to do is play video games and create, you know, stuff on games. And, and then you see the creators themselves of the, the tools not caring enough to make it fun for you. It's just like, okay, well, I'm wasting my time. Like, let me find something. That- yeah, that that oh. is that that right there is the the worst feeling in the world. Um, I got another one that just came in like last minute. Uh, uh, AKA uh, Justin, AKA Jane X, AKA Udon Noodles says, "What do you plan on doing to prevent an exploit in the mechanics of gameplay like we see in a typical wrestling game?" Okay, so um. It, it would just really depend on whatever the exploit is, honestly. Like, the only thing I've been able to think of so far that people could spam is um, the, the the overusage of high-powered moves or high-impact moves. Uh-huh. And what I've done to prevent something like that is I actually have um, – it's, it's the um, law of diminishing returns. I, I implemented that on moves where every time uh-huh. you use the move, it's less effective. So it, it, it's training you to say, okay, if I want to really make this move, and the moves, like the impact of the moves are percentage-based. So it's based on however much momentum you already have, it would add to it, or um, the amount of energy you have, it would take from that, like, percentage. I think I think I actually switched that. I don't think energy is percentage-based anymore. I think it's just momentum. So the thing is, you want to wait until you have, like, a good amount of momentum to use those high momentum-adding moves, because if you use it early on, um, you, it won't have as much impact when you try to use it again. So that's been the thing that I thought about the most, and I think that's a pretty cool fix for it because, you know, you don't want to play a match against somebody and they pull the angel's wings out. Um, I mean, uh, one-winged angel <laughs> out seven times. Or the row. spear, <laughs> like Brock Lesnar. No, like Brock Lesnar. Not the spear, but uh, uh, the F5, F5, like Brock Lesnar. Suplex, yeah. Like, that would piss me off. So um, in order to, you know, battle that, if they pull out, and then also it's tier based, so you can't just pull out a spear or um, a, a F5 at the beginning of the match, anyways, unless the match had that much heat going into it. Yeah. Um, or or if it's a squash match, then I might make it where you know the person who's doing the squashing can start on tier three, and the other person starts on tier one. May, um, may I give an idea for a potential card? Yeah. So what what if like I don't know maybe you had a series of cards that are supposedly you know like you know powerful moves but they're not it's like you ever seen like the uh the comedy guy he'll bust out like a stunner and the guy's like what are you doing he just gets right back up or he doesn't sell it like oh yeah yeah you would so, you would have something like like the guy will bust out a spear and then you know his opponent will just get back up like you, you what are you stupid yeah so that's actually a modifier in there um okay I, I, look at that See, you yeah, everything. Yeah. yeah so i haven't actually added those in so people haven't seen them yet but i have different multi- modifiers that you can add on moves at certain points of time. So let's say if I'm getting ready to defend, like I'm about to get attacked, I can say no sell. So then whatever the move is that the opponent throws out, I just no sell it. Like I I just act like it didn't happen. Or um, double impact moves where if I'm about to do a move, I can use a double impact and now it does double the damage or, you know, finish your stealing. Like these are different modifiers that I've add that I'm adding in um, that will, you know, let you do things like that. Cause I'm, I've been watching a lot of Japanese wrestling, like a lot of those matches and, um, you know, classic PWG, ROH, um, current NXT and, um, watching these matches to kind of get the flow and see like what are like I took I took notes of every move that happened in some of these matches like it was Almas versus um 
um, Gargano. And every move they did, I wrote down. I'm like, okay, they did this, then they did that, then they did this. And who did it? And and I'm trying to base my flow on that to take a look at it and say, okay, well, they used like this percent of, percentage of strike moves, this percentage of grapple moves at this point in time. Then they slowed it down with a headlock, waited till the crowd got back into it. Then they started with the strikes again, maybe a dive to the outside. Like these are different things that I tried to account for so that when you play the match, it feels like um, you're actually – had putting on a great show. Like I want you to feel, and then that's the other thing. I I hate it when these wrestling games had the star rating in the middle of the match. That's never happened. It, it needs to that see that that's HUD issue. That he say see here's what here's one thing like one takeaway that I don't know you use it or not. But my my takeaway is I don't I don't mind like different options, but give me the option for for online. In your case, you don't have online yet, but like if if you do, hopefully you do, because this this the, the the idea of this online versus somebody else or a group of people sounds amazing, but potentially amazing. So, but I'm saying is. You can have all these weird HUDs and systems, but give us the option. This is not even for you, but it's to everybody, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Give us the option to turn them on or off. Like, yeah. uh, you know, maybe I don't want my star rating to the end of the match, so give me the option to just have it turn on at the end of the match. I don't need yeah. it right now. I don't need my HUD right now. Let me play my online match. Let me play my regular match without no dang HUD. Why do you have to put it in my freaking face? It, it's yeah. silly. Give yeah. me the option. That's it. Like, if I want it, all right, cool. If I don't, all right, cool. We Just give me the option. That's, not, that's what I'm saying. As a developer, just give us the options. That's it. Yeah. And, and, and going into that, like, the, the star system is something that I put at the end of my match. Yes, I don't want the way it's to supposed know. to be. Like, if, you, if you're in a match real time, like Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, if they're fighting, you're not going to have the ref saying, all right, you're at three stars now. You're at four stars. You're almost there. Like, that's not happening. You have to put the whole match on, and then after the match, they have to take more things into account and then say, that was a five or six star match. Yeah. Because in my game, you can have a six star match. It's hidden. It's hard to get, but you can have a six star match. Um, but that that's something that I really, I really, I really wanted to go opposite in a couple of these things that didn't make sense to me. Um, and then speaking of that hood, like even the hood, I didn't want to have my moves covered up with hood. That's why every time you click a move, when you decide, okay, that's the move I'm doing. As long as you hit execute, the entire hood goes away and it shows the move. And then phase back out. The opponent doesn't move. Then phase back out, and then it shows you the hood. Damn. So it, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's so like see see in their defense, maybe I couldn't stand it. Oh, because all right, well, right now the match is picking up, so now it's looking like a four star match. I don't know why I'm doing the voice, but it just it's just aggravating. Like I hate I hate having stuff in my way. If I don't want it. Take it out. I'll put it in there later. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It just, I don't know, man. Like this, I can go on and complain about these games for the long for the longest time, but we gonna we're gonna wrap up a little bit. But um all right, so I got I got actually a two I put the two uh two part question my myself. Um well the first the, the, the first question is how can we help, basically? Um so currently what what I really need is the word um being spread around. Um I'm the type of person where I'm not asking everybody to say this is the best game ever. Like, I'm not even expecting that. I'm expecting 90, 70% of the people who see this idea to hate it until they experience it and then, you know, get feedback based on that. But I really just want people um, people to see it. I need eyes on the product. Um, right now, I'm sitting at, like, 100 Twitter followers or something like that. I have, yeah. like, 40 on my um, Twitch stream. And I, I really just need to get these numbers up because when I start putting out things like, okay, here's the first version, I want my build to be so nice. Like, I want to have so enough people to actually play it and keep it sustained. Not a game that releases, you have 50 people play it, and then it's done. You know, um, yeah, so that, yeah. that's really what I'm doing right now. And then if people want to help on the monetary side, I do have a Patreon that is linked in my um, website. And um, some of the things that I'll be offering on there are exclusive updates. So anytime I'm working on the game, you can get an exclusive version of it. Um, if I'm doing podcasts that are just, you know, private things like my thoughts or me just talking, I'll be putting that in. And then moves. Like, you'll get rare moves that nobody else will get if you subscribe to it. Uh, um, <laughs> very nice. Yeah, yeah, It's slippery yeah. slope, though, but very nice. It's slippery yeah. slope. Gotta be careful. Check, check out the modifiers, man, because you know. People are like, yo, how, how, how come this thing is splashed as a 150% damage? I have uh-huh. a stinger splash, but it's only doing it's only doing seventy seven percent. What's going on? Why does it have a Patreon next to it? A Patreon star next to it? What's what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's the thing though. These moves will still be balanced. So 
they won't be like ultimate moves that just in the match. These would still be balanced moves, um, like the rest, but they will just be versions like like an alternate version for a V trigger that you could get that nobody else has, and it basically would do the right amount of damage, but you would have it and nobody else could get it. It would look different, steady. basically. Yeah, like a skin for moves. Yeah. yeah. See there, you see, look, he gets it, y'all. He already uh, he gets it. Okay, yeah. so I had a question, my brain just froze. It's fine. Anyway, um, if if you're looking for a, a QA, this is this is basically me pitching. If you need any kind of voice work, um, you know, yeah. holla, holla at your boy. I have very reasonable fees, i.e., as in free. Uh, and if, <laughs> and if you need a QA, I might know a guy, but um, he has a very horrible personality, but he's really good at his job. Okay, he, I'll tell you after. I'll tell you after the podcast. Okay. <laughs> but he's really good, but he's really a dick. But, you know, sometimes you got to. But we'll end with this. Um, So you mentioned, my last question, you mentioned that you, um, you're you a perfectionist and you're very stubborn. How open are you to, like, you know, criticisms on certain aspects of the game? Like, if, like, let's say you get a, a good following, you get your stuff out, and then, you know, people are feeling a kind of way about something that you're doing. You said you're stubborn. Would, would it? Would it? Would you just be like, no, no, no? It's 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 my, like because M. Dicky was like that a lot. M. Dicky, yeah. like you couldn't tell M. Dicky nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think um, when I say I'm stubborn, it's to a, it's to an extent. Um, I'm most of the time I'm stubborn with myself or when people try to control my entire life, like aspects of my life. Okay, um, got you, got and, you. And, and and that's really what it comes to. But the thing is, as an artist, I'm sensitive about my stuff. Yeah, I, you know that. But the thing about it is, um, I came from a, a world where feedback was considered a gift. So we worked on big projects and we would have to get word from Disney, the word from Marvel. And they would tell us like, hey, you can't do that, can't do this. And then I, I have experience in my failure. Um, I released a game called Scrap City on mobile. It sucked. It was, a, it was a game. Um, I got over 20,000 downloads in the first week, right? It was Detroit rappers on it fighting each other. Yeah. And um, the game, to me, I hated it. But people like, you know, people liked it. So then I, I spent a whole year revamping, doing this and that, and I released it, and people didn't like it. And that was something where, you know, I was like, okay, well, I got to just take this L. Um, and I can't, it's not really something that I'm, I'm going to hide from or, I'm going to cry in the corner and, you know, be all sad about it. It's just something where, you know, you got to take that feedback um, and take that feedback as analysis, you know. So I, I won't just take one comment and then rebuild the entire game based on that. I have to take comments and groups, you know, and see, okay, what what's the majority of um, opinions on this? Yeah. Um, if majority of the people are telling me the same thing, okay, let's see how we can fix it. But I'm I'm pretty good. I'm typically pretty good. I don't I don't like when people come at me um nasty, stupid. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you don't have to disrespect me. You don't have to do any of that because I'm not doing that to you. Um, I'm 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 pretty open and honest about everything. I'm transparent. So if you have a feature you don't like. Tell me, and I work on, you know, how can we improve it? Like, oh, just if you have something you hate, bring something to the table. Let's see how we can work it out and actually find a, um, uh, an open ground, uh, a level ground. But, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm already 100% sure I'm going to have a lot of people who are like, man, this game sucks. But a lot of people, and these are the people that I really want to play the game, are going to be like, man, this is a dope concept. I'm having six-star, five-star matches um, like once a month, not every single day. And I actually feel like I'm learning about the wrestling business as I play. And those are the people who I really want to, you know, get into the game. Because at the end of the day, it's not a it's not a cash grab. I'm not trying to just get um, rich and just throw anything out there. No, nah, it's it sounds it sounds like you got passion for the project. That like that's that's the key yeah. part. And the fact that you're open to criticism and you you're willing to take criticisms. Like, see, it, and just to bring it to me real quick, like. I'm I'm okay with criticism because I think that everything I do stinks. But like, if someone comes at me stupid, even if they make a good point, I'm be like, no, because I'm, I'm ignorant. I'm like, oh, well, you go, no, no. See, you got the good idea because you're like, they'll come at you and you're like, well, you're right, and I'll fix it. But if someone comes at you stupid, you you're still gonna want to fix it if they have a valid point. The thing is, like, how do you like? Do you feel the same way with like blunt criticisms? Because there's people who who they're necessarily rude or aggressive but they're like blunt and it's just kind of like oh well okay let me tell you something man i i just thought about this let me tell you something brother let me tell you something uh, brother <laughs> that's when, not um, yeah when, when i was a creator that's what it was like on the websites on being on it was a website called cause.ws yes i remember um, yeah 
smattalks.org. Yep. And I would be on those sites. And when I was a teenager, man, I was young and I was posting my trash creations on there. <laughs> And I would have, you know, grown men coming on there. Man, this sucks. The fix the hair, fix the nose. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look anything like them. Like, like people would come on there and they would tell me how they felt. And when I was a kid, when I first started, I was like, dang, you ain't gotta be so mean. But then as I as I started doing it more, and I started seeing um, respect built, you know, because it, it was respect being built because of how I was handling it. I wasn't going crying saying, no, your creations suck. Um, I was going and saying, okay, well, let me take that feedback. And it does like, you know, based on what you said, I made that change. And you no, know, I'm the type of person where if somebody gives me feedback and they say, all right, some sucks or whatever, uh, I'll make the change if it makes sense. Like I said, based on if it's a majority of people with the same opinion, and then I'll tag the person who said whatever they said. And I'll be oh, like, oh yeah, go take a look at it. Like, you know, I went and made the change. Let me know what you think now. And I feel like that's part of my brand. And that's why I'm not scared to put my face out there and tell people, hey, this is who I am. This is the stuff I used to do. These are um, creations I used to do. I'm not completely proud of all of my work. But the thing is, if I'm putting passion into it, um, I think I can make something great. And if you tell me that you think the game sucks and you don't want to play it, you can get a refund. I'll I'll gladly give you a refund if you pay for it. Um, But if you actually want to come to the table with some good feedback or um, more ideas, then that's stuff that I can work with and we can actually build something amazing and develop good relationships based on that. Like I love when people come and tell me stuff. I don't like when people just like, Oh, it looks great. It looks great. Like I like when people come and say, okay, yeah, it looks good, but you should tweak that. Or, you know, this might be a nice feature or, you know, try to do this in the future. You know, that those are the people who I feel get the most, um, the best out of you, you know, as a creator, yeah, as a programmer, as a content creator or developer, like, those people who come in and actually care about helping the product out and not just saying, okay, I'm, I'm about to be a dick today. So. This is this is the great, yeah, like, like, how do I explain it? The worst thing that, 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 like, you can ever hear is, um, yo, this sucks. All right, why does it suck? It just does. Like, right. like what, are you, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? Like, that's not, that's not helping. Tell mm-hmm. like that's happened like th- throughout the nonsense that I do for all these years like that's happened every now and again. Someone will say like, "Oh, this is bad." All right, cool. What, what do you mean? Oh, it's just bad. So you don't have anything else to add. You don't have nothing. You don't have a counterpoint. You don't have anything else to add. You just, it just sucks. But you don't have nothing. Yeah, you pl- please take a long walk off, off a short pier. You stupid <laughs> bastard. Like and, and and I feel like even to that, that's when you start going. Um, that's that's more biased. You know, that's where yeah. you get more into opinion. Versus fact. Exactly. Like if, if, if we're talking about something I'm creating for a collective group, I need facts to be brought to me. Um, and and opinions to a certain extent, but not um 100% opinion, zero percent fact. Like meet me somewhere in the middle where you know I feel this way about something, but it would be better if you did this. I got something to work on. If you're just talking, you're just talking. I, I can go and say your haircut sucks, and that's not. Gonna, <laughs> but no, I'm just saying like. <laughs> That that's not gonna fix anything. Yeah, it's not. It's that's funny just my though. opinion, and 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 I feel like when people really understand, I don't think people ever really will understand it to to um one hundred. Nah, but you know, once you fail on a big stage, and you had that experience failing in front of family, failing in front of friends, failing in front of you know all these people, and I listen to um, Gary Vee a lot. And I listen to some of the stuff he says about, you know, not caring about what um, Sally G says on Instagram, who you've never met in your life and caring about what your parents say. And if being a middle grounder, like I honestly feel like if you bought my product and you supported me, thank you. Um, If you want to really help me make something dope, thank you. Thank you. And if you want to continue a relationship and continue doing that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you don't care about any of these things, if you don't want to have a fun game to play, and you just want to trash it, go play 2K20. <laughs> like it's it's a hundred other, it's, it's five or six other wrestling games out here. You have to be stuck. You know, I just don't. That's just how I feel. Though. No, I just feel like you know, play 2K20 and say nothing's wrong. Yeah, what, that's what, that's really what it is. You know? <laughs> it's like every game will have flaws, but yeah. you, gotta, you gotta be willing to work with somebody. So. I, I I think once I start getting that hate, um, I don't know how to handle it. Um, I'm just I, I just I was just basically checking to see if you if you're one of those like creative types that's like super emotional about what they do, because that you can't you you know for something like this you can't 
I mean, right. it, it kind of worked for M, uh, for for McDicky. I don't. Know. I used to call him M Dicky, McDicky, or whatever his name is. It's not M Dicky. I don't know. I think I think it's because his name Matt. So I thought it was like Matt Dicky. So his initials. I think it's M M. I think it's M Dicky, but I don't know. Remember, I don't know how to pronounce words, as you learned in the short amount of time we spoke. But yeah, so <laughs> like he he's really notoriously allegedly. I don't know him personally. It's like was was not really good with with opinions and I've, I've met plenty of people like in my little field that you know they think they're the best ever and then you point something out and they lose their freaking minds so mm -hmm. it's like you know you gotta be like you gotta be flexible and and just talking to you now for this short amount of time like i dig the vibe i dig what you're trying to do and i'm not trying like i don't really kiss ass but but problem is i'm really not good at giving opinions properly because i'm very blunt but it's not it doesn't come from a place of like Ah, you stink. It just comes from a place of like, I, it's really difficult for me to sugarcoat things. So, looking at this and looking at the ambitions, like, I don't know if you might be able to reach every goal like out the gate, but that's not your idea. Your idea is to go little by little and have something presentable. So, I think if you can get something presentable, like, I think you got a shot, man. Like, just just off rip, this concept would do wonders for like those sim people like i'm not a sim person but like they like that kind of stuff and if they don't like it the actual efed efed people which we'll talk about a little bit you know off cat off uh thingy thing like they might get a real a real hoot out of this especially if you have a a fairly deep creation suite like if you can make your like if if i if we go in december you said you're aiming for december if we go in december and i can't create nothing for not for not for nothing but if i can go on workshop grab a kenny omega it looks like kenny omega but in your engine it's like oh that is already half the battle. Like if I see a very accurate Kenny Omega in your in your game in December, like I'm not putting pressure. Like yo, where's just, <laughs> I, I can't yo, wait, yo, 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 like yo, yo Shannon is is December is December 27th with the game. Like I'm not saying that, but I'm saying like if you can do that, like if you would just hit that from my personal level, like if you hit that, that is already like half the battle to me. I don't know what it stands for anybody else, but that I don't know, man. Like it's just just to see something like that, like oh. That's a really good The Rock, and it's in 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 this independent yo like, so you know I'm I'm rooting for you, bro, and you know we're gonna wrap up right now. Where where can they find you in all aspects of everything? Give all all of the plugs. Are you the floor is your all of the plugs now? Okay, so um real quick, I'm, I'm gonna try my best. Um, but if you go to Grind City. GamingStudio.com. And actually, I need to buy I need to buy a different domain. But you <laughs> you go, need to buy something <laughs> real simple. Yeah, like I'm going to get this domain. You, you, you might, like, well, well, I'll tell you I'll, okay, I'll tell you off because if you say, like, oh, yeah, well, I'll just, buy, yeah, so I'll yeah. tell you off. But go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, yeah, if you go to GrindCityGamingStudio.com, um, you can see all of my social links. And please sign up for the newsletters um, because I'll be sending those out weekly with, um, formal updates to let people know what's going on. But I am on Instagram at gotta go to more. Um <laughs> Spot Callers Game. So S P O T C A L L E R Z G A M E. I'm on Twitter at Spot Callers. So S P O T C A L L E R Z. Um if you go to Facebook, I have a group for a Spot Callers Wrestling Game. Um I am also on TikTok a little bit. And on TikTok, or wow, right when you go through this, on tw TikTok, it's just like my Instagram, Spot Callers Game. Okay. Uh, if you want to email me, spotcallers at gmail.com. Uh, uh, everything else. We got a Discord. Every, but I'm telling you to go to my my website because you get the direct link to everything because I'm on YouTube, Twitch, um, podcast going on. So everything, Discord, everything. All right, and I just I got one question that I was supposed to ask, but I forgot. Why the name Spot Callers? Oh yeah, so a little bit on that, uh, and I, I spoke about it in Dre's video as well. But the name itself is derivative of what wrestlers call moves. Yes. So if you've ever really seen wrestlers talk about moves backstage or whatever it is, they take they typically call them spots, right? And um, when you are doing a move or when you're getting ready to do a move, they call it calling a spot. And um, at the time when I was originally creating this wrestling game, the Young Bucks were really, really hot in like 2016, 2017. Yes, they were. They used to get called Spot Monkeys all the time. <laughs> so I thought, you know what, this is a cool... Because they actually gave me permission to use them in the game. I don't think I will, though, because it's kind of weird since they got AEW coming out now. Yeah. But um, it was one of those things where 
I wanted to put a twist on it. So instead of calling my wrestling game Indie Scene Wrestling, home of the Spot Monkeys, <laughs> I decided. <laughs> Jeez, now nah, I don't know if that's going. That's not. That's not going to work. <laughs> I decided to say, okay, Spot Callers, and it sounds dope. It sounds cool. You know, it, it, it's got a hip hip um hip hop vibe to it a little bit. Yeah, the, the, the Z, band. the Z, got, the Z <laughs> brought me back to 1997, man. Right, and um, and it it makes sense. So I added the wrestling at the end, so people know it's a wrestling game. Yeah, that's but, like, um, that's smart. Yeah, but it's spot callers. It, it was that's just how it came about. So uh, th- this has been the name of the unnamed podcast. My name is JCS. This was <laughs> this is spot callers gaming, <laughs> Mister Williams. Thank you for your time. Thank you for a good. I had a good. I came in bad. I had a good. I had a good Friday. So I want to thank you for that. And we will see you the next go round. Spot callers, go to all of the social medias. Follow this man. Help this man grow because we need more diversification in the wrestling genre. All right, we out of here. Have a wonderful night. Peace and out. Hey, folks, don't forget to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash OCW Fed TV. That's youtube.com slash OCW Fed TV. And on Twitch at twitch.tv slash OCWFed. Again, that's twitch.tv slash OCWFed. Check us out every Thursday and usually every other Saturday for more content. Thank you. Have a great day and night and evening, whatever time. You have a great one.